after a week in which lawmakers from the Northeast, Democrats and Republicans, were livid that Speaker John Boehner pulled a vote on Hurricane Sandy aid, the House finally got around to voting on it today. They overwhelmingly approved nearly $10 billion for flood insurance, but not before a number of frustrated congressmen said it was about time. This legislation is vital. This is not a handout. This is not something we're looking for as a favor. This action by the House Republican leadership is too little and too late. These are human beings. Human beings. Children that have been completely displaced. And it's up to us to get them back on their feet. This is a total, total disaster in helping those people that we are purposely saying today and pontificating about, we're helping them. Isn't that wonderful? What's our jobs? We're not doing anybody any favors. That's why we were sent here. Try it once in a while, democracy. You may Still, the bill has its critics on the right. The Club for Growth, a group that opposes adding to the deficit, encouraged Republicans to vote against the aid, and 67 members of Congress, all of the Republicans, voted no. Joining me, communications director for the Club for Growth, Barney Keller, and Ron Reagan, author and MSNBC contributor. Mr. Keller, let me start with you. What's the nature of the opposition to the Club for Growth to this aid package? Well, thanks for having me, Michael. And first, I should say that, uh, you know, the club wants um, the victims of Sandy to get the relief that they need from the government. But unfortunately, what happens is, is every time the government has a uh, disaster relief bill, what they do is they come up with a big spending bill. It's not paid for. There's no accountability or oversight. And it's loaded with pork. And I'm afraid that's what we saw in the Senate bill. I'm afraid that's what we're going to see going forward. It's just another big spending bill that isn't paid for. It isn't offset with anything. But to, Today's be, to bill be clear, was, because I was confused about this, the House version did not have pork. We can agree on that, right? Well, the bill that passed today was just an extension of flood insurance, but it wasn't paid for. Um, again, it, you know, pork is just one of the many issues that were in the big uh, Senate bill that uh, Governor Christie and others were upset about, um, and members of Congress and that, uh, that you showed were upset but Barney, about. But let me, let me just so that I'm clear. If this were a, a funding bill for nails to be used in shingles for people's roofs, you'd have still been against it on the basis that there was no offset. It's the offset, not the nature of what it was that drives your opposition. Is that true? Well, no, that's not entirely true. In today's bill, the nature was just that it was an offset. Um, the offset is just one of the many things. We think that the bill could be parceled out into smaller chunks. Uh, there's no reason why the government has to go and appropriate $10 billion in one day. Um, we don't know if that money is going directly to Sandy victims. Um, you know, the flood insurance program itself is broken. Uh, uh, people should be asking why. Um, you know, people are paying premiums, but yet the the uh, the fund doesn't have enough money well, let me, let to me pay out the the claims. Uh, you know, I, these are fundamental problems. And every time we get into a disaster, we do the exact same thing. We just keep kicking the can down the road and asking our children to pay for it. And that's what we're doing right let now. Let me ask Ron Reagan to weigh in. And, and Ron, I should mention that after the Senate earlier passed its version of the San Diego bill, Senators John McCain and Tom Coburn put out a list of what they called questionable spending in it, including, for example, two million to repair damage to the roofs of museums in Washington, D.C., while many in Hurricane Sandy's path still have no roof over their heads, $150 million for fisheries as far away from the storm's path as Alaska, $15 million for NASA facilities, though NASA itself has called damage from the hurricane minimal. All of those provisions were stripped from the bill the House approved today. I want to underscore that. It was pork-free. Ron Reagan, what do you make of this? Well, as far as those provisions being in there in the first place, unfortunately, that's that's how sausages are made in Washington, D.C. And let's remember, we're talking about a, a, an appropriation that is some $10,000 million. You cited less than $200 million out of that $10,000 million that is questionable. It was stripped out, but even if it wasn't stripped out, even if that was the price you pay for greasing the skids of government to get needed aid to people, I would argue that it is necessary that you must do that. It's unfortunate, but we must do that. Now look, if you want to have a discussion about flood insurance in this country or what FEMA does and how it does it and how effectively it does it, that's fine. But you don't do it when you have thousands of people in desperate need. You don't hold those people hostage, in a sense, to your ideological predispositions. That is an ugly, thuggish way to do business. Barney, he's essentially saying when the house is on fire, put the water on it and then sort this out. 
But that's not entirely fair. What Ron neglects to mention is that the reason the House has broken up this uh, Sandy Relief Bill into three different parts is because they also want a $33 billion uh, appropriation to go towards future disaster mitigation projects. Now, I don't know exactly how that $33 billion uh, is supposed to grease the skids of Washington. I guess I can think of a couple of different ways, but, you know, again, you know, we can't keep adding money to the debt that we don't have. Then we can't keep borrowing money from China to pay for it. Uh, the is there something matters? wrong with disaster mitigation? There's Future no, disaster no. mitigation? I, mean, I, I think that would probably be a pretty good idea, given what Ron, happened how does, Ron, I don't, Ron, I don't understand how building levees five years down the future in New York helps a, a person who's looking for disaster relief right now who's homeless on the street. Perhaps you well, can explain that What's wrong that to with me. thinking ahead? I, I don't really understand then it. it should be you considered you considered to be so upset not? that the government would, <laughs> would, spend thing, would spend money without any offsets. You must have been absolutely furious about the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah, we're we're totally curious about all the profligate spending that went over Barney, that went can on I, during yeah, yeah, yeah. Barney, 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 the Barney, that's why we exist. Barney, Barney, for consistency, was this your position on Katrina? Yeah, uh, we, we opposed the Katrina relief bill. It wasn't offset as well. And look what happened with Hurricane Katrina. Um, the Hurricane Katrina relief bill, uh, they passed a huge spending bill. It wasn't offset. There was no accountability. And afterwards, we heard all sorts of stories about FEMA trailers being left untouched uh, in New Orleans while people were starving in the streets. You know, this is, again, the, Ron, when, when, Ron, Ron Reagan, if I can make a, an additional point, give, reflecting mm -hmm. on the first segment of the program, you know, there are votes mm -hmm. and there are key votes. Club for Growth says this is a key vote, which means it mm -hmm. fact in Barney, you correct me if I'm wrong. It factors into the rating that they give to members, That's right. and so therefore, Ron Reagan, this plays a role in primary season. You know, this is the sort of mm. thing where if you voted for that, you got lesser of a score for the club for growth. You've increased the odds that you will draw a Republican opponent in the next midterm election. Uh, yes, and I understand, and that, that is the uh, the threat, of course. But again, playing that sort of game when you've got people in need just seems to me to be strangely ugly, and it puts Republican candidates, forget about the Democrats, puts Republican candidates in a very difficult position. They have to toady to the to the club for growth and not vote their conscience, I imagine, in many instances. Many of these Republicans, I assume, really wanted to help people, but they felt like they couldn't because they'd pay politically down the line. Barney was uh, I would just that. It reminds me of the whole the Grover Norquist issue and the, the pledge against tax increases. Well, I would just say that the problem with Republicans is that they don't act like Republicans. Uh, you know, people send Republicans to Washington supposedly to cut taxes and live in government. Uh, after the fiscal cliff deal they voted for, if they had voted for the Sandy Bill, they would have voted to increase taxes and expand government. So I, I think the Republican Party, uh, you know, if they're really serious about saving America from its debt crisis, you know, I'm a young guy, but uh, I'm not too old to remember when uh, the national debt was $14.6 trillion. That was just last August. Uh, we just hit the debt ceiling at $16.4 trillion. Uh, again, Ron, we just Ron can't Reagan, keep a very quick it. final word. Go ahead, sir. Well, uh, listen, you know, the, the Republican administration that preceded the Obama administration is responsible for most of our debt. Absolutely our they are. So, Absolutely they are. Yeah, it, it, indeed. So we I'm glad we agree on, on that. Common ground. But again, you don't hold people who are suffering hostage. Thank